for me, I did TEDx, so it's like under 15 minutes, and they told me to send them my script, not an outline. Send them a recording of me giving the talk, and then they had to approve it, and it was this whole thing. Yeah. So. But you spent a lot of time memorizing it. I went so far as to look up techniques as to how to memorize. I listened to myself giving it, and I would listen to it in my AirPods. I'd listen to it 24 seven on a loop in my car, and then I broke it out into four different sections on my speech, and I'd master one section at a time. You are listening to Humanity Unlocked. I am your host, Kimberly Diet, and this is take number six of us trying, me trying to record this episode, take number two with Mark. I have had, you know what, I think Mercury is in retrograde if you believe in that, which I'm not even sure what that means, but I think it interferes. Nothing good. I think it interferes with technology. I think I, I have had <laughs> more issues trying to, trying to film this episode, which is why it's going up a week late. Um, I had a good technology day yesterday, though. Did you? Well, I don't actually don't know if Mercury's in retrograde. I'm just saying that because that's what people say when when technology goes wrong. But anyways, welcome back. Welcome to season three. We are back. So happy to be back and so much to tell you guys about and so much to get caught up on. And first things first, we are on YouTube. If you have not subscribed, get subscribed. Search Humanity Unlocked Podcast and you can see all of season two with the exception of just one episode, which is my mom's episode over on YouTube, uh, you can see the video. So, and then the YouTubers, of course, who are watching, please subscribe to us over on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all the things. So, okay, now that that's out of the way, we've had so much going on. I'm trying to figure out where to start. I have told the story already five times, but every episode is different, which is actually a good thing because it's very, it's off the cuff. I don't have any, normally I have everything written yeah. out almost, you know, to... I think getting started in the first two seasons, I needed to have very structured clear, notes. Structured all, yeah. No yeah. So I'm doing a little less of that. Um, so first things first. So, or second things second, I guess at this point. So our last episode was January 26th. You and I sat yep. together and um, we talked about a few different things. I said I was going to be taking all of February off, which I did. And I'll be back mm -hmm. on March 1st. Um, which you didn't, which I was not. And that's for a few different reasons. Well, one main reason, and that is because of, if you're, if you're not aware, I gave a Ted talk and, um, well, backing up just a little bit, the reason why, um, to catch those up who either forgot or don't know, the reason why I was taking February off was because I needed to get clear on what I was going to be doing in season three. I felt very confused. I didn't know what direction I was going. I felt like I was being pulled in a direction that I didn't want to go in, that I never intended on going in. And that was just because I was at, I felt almost at the mercy of those, who, the ones who reached out to me that wanted to be on the podcast or who got referred to me. Now, if you were, were a guest on the podcast or for the listeners, those who, those who were a guest on the podcast, those, all those people are people I wanted to have on. So I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about a lot of the other people who either were referred or who asked to be on that their what they wanted to do what was just not congruent with what I'm trying to do. It just it mm -hmm. didn't make sense. So it was like having having a, a an episode for the sake of having an episode. And I'm just I, I'm much more of a quality over quantity person. And I and I know I'm new and I maybe can't afford to be as picky, but but maybe I can because I'm, you know, I'm not getting paid for this right now. So now's the time to really work out all of these, you know, issues and stuff and decide. Oh, yeah, you want to hone in your show. Yeah, decide, you know, get branded, decide, um, or not get branded, but decide on, <laughs> decide your, on your brand. Yeah. Um, so... I took the month off because I want a, a couple couple things. I wanted to uh, answer the question of, am I going to do a niche podcast? Because that's something that would have been sort of like taking the easy way for me personally, because it would mean that I could easily reach out to anybody I wanted to have them on. And there wouldn't be all the barriers that existed prior. Um, because my podcast is what it is, the topics tend to be a little more sensitive and so I, I go about getting my guests a little differently. I don't really poach people or approach people unless I feel, unless there's, you know, I've got clearance to do so, whatever. So I feel every situation out very, they're all weighed individually. So uh, I decided ultimately that I was not going to do a niche. I really 
because otherwise, why am I doing I'm doing the podcast for a very specific reason. I'm not doing the podcast because I just woke up and decided I want to do a podcast. I'm doing the podcast because I kept wanting to have these conversations over like nightly. We were having conversations like the ones I have on the podcast and I wanted, and I just thought, you know, why don't I have a podcast? So it doesn't make sense if I'm, otherwise I don't want it if I'm not doing the thing that I came here to do. Right. But so are you saying that you don't want a niche or you do want a niche? I don't because so if I... in other words, I, you want to be more of a generalist, more broad? Well, a niche limit would be more limiting. That's right. A niche would be very like a very narrow lane mm-hmm. of like one certain kind of theme. Yeah. And then, but more, uh, but a generalist, but within a, within parameters you're like looking to, to grow into, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I, but but it would exclude a lot of conversations I want to have if I niched. So that's yeah, why that's right. I don't even know if niched is a word, but so ultimately I decided I'm not going to do that. Um, yeah. The other thing was um, I, I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to take a more aggressive approach in terms of contacting my guests um, to come on, and with that would come just a difference. Uh, a different variety of topics, ones that, you know, have not been suggested to me, ones that a lot of them are not on my website. Mm -hmm. Um, And I needed the month, and turns out two months, to really come up with the topics that I ultimately was able to come up with that I'm so excited about, and I'm going to be sharing a lot of them today. I needed that time. These are topics that never really um, uh, occurred to me prior. So it's almost like I just needed that space to really have, um, to develop these thoughts, um, and these ideas and these, um, questions. And so, so we're going to be going over that. But the other thing that happened was, um, some of you know that I think I did speak about this in one of our, in one of our episodes when I was editing it, I realized, oh gosh, I did talk about that. The fact that I was approached for a Ted talk, Mm -hmm. Well, I was suggested for a TED Talk, I should say, last fall. Um, it was right before we launched the podcast. I agreed. They rescheduled, but they were scheduled for a date that we were out of town for Jordan's 21st birthday. So I said, I can't, you know, I'm sorry. If you reschedule again or if you do another one, please let me know. I'd be honored. And for all I knew, they they did it in October. And turns out they did it. And they actually rescheduled it for March. And I was, um, I was contacted at like mid-February uh, to be a speaker and at my knee jerk initial reaction was to decline because (laughs) because I was just starting to formulate the ideas for season three and I was getting excited and I was was putting the puzzle pieces together and then it was like hey do you want to do do you want to be a speaker and for me I don't do you know, one of the things that you said in our last foiled attempt at this podcast is I don't do anything halfway so if I'm going to do it I'm going to do it. You know, I'm going to do it right. And I don't have the same usable hours in a day as most people have. So for me, my days are um, much shorter in terms of the amount of energy I have to give any one project. So knowing that, knowing my limitations, I had to make a choice. Either do the TED Talk and not come back on March 1st, uh, wait an an additional month-ish to come back or two weeks, two, three weeks, or um, say no to the TED Talk. And I was going to say no. And then, yeah, I, no, asked I encouraged you, you to, to definitely say yes because it you never know what opportunities it's going to present you. And look, I mean, you could work on a couple more episodes or you could do a TED talk. I mean, like, yeah, it's like you know, yeah, the difference is huge. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I get so like set in my like, um, I think when I'm dialed in, you don't like to deviate your path, you're like really focused. Yeah, yeah you got tunnel vision. Well, well, when I, yeah, it's like when I'm dialed in. I don't want to, I don't want to tear myself away. And I know, I knew exactly what that would entail. I mean, I've watched well, my fair share of TED You talks. also, like when you get yourself dialed in, part of that is an energy thing because yeah. you have so much energy, like, like you could direct it in so many places. Like me, I have a relatively unlimited amount of energy, so I could pivot every which you way I want to. You have more than the average person. Okay, fair enough. I have less. Uh, and you have much, much less than the average yeah. person. But what, so when you are going down a path, and you've got this momentum for you to stop, pivot, restart, and go to a new direction. It takes so much energy, and you feel like you've wasted it. that energy that you already like gave to something that it's painful to 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 switch yeah. just just from the pivot alone. You're so smart. It's exactly oh, it's exactly what I don't think I could have said it. I don't even think it. 
I don't think it occurred to me in that way that you just said it, but that's exactly what it is. It's to stop. You, you're picking up the momentum and then to stop. It's like, it's like when we go on vacation and you're in the middle of doing a few different deals at once and you got more people calling you, you're mm-hmm. like, oh, and even though, yeah, you want a vacation. Yeah, I want a TED Talk, but to stop. Yeah. To, <laughs> it's almost painful. Yeah, it is. It is painful when you're working some deals and, and uh, you know, to, to leave. Oh, I'm like, no, 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 I can't leave just yet. I yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people don't understand, like, why it's hard for you to get away. And that's usually why. I mean. Yeah. Hey, for those that, that don't know. You're I'm real a real estate broker. Yeah, I'm a real estate yeah. broker. So, um, one sec. Let me take a drink. So, um, so I was approached. So initially I was going to say, no, I talked to you. I talked to the kids, talked, you know, didn't talk to many people. And, um, everybody was like, especially my kids, they were like, are you crazy? Of course you have to do it. It's like, not, you don't know if you're ever going to be offered this again. You know, it's, they gave me all the reasons I knew they would just reinforce them. And then you same, you same thing. So, I didn't want to take more time off the podcast. I was already taking a month off, but and ultimately I just said, okay, let me just do this. And I had intended on coming on March 1st and saying, hey, in two weeks I'm giving a TED Talk. I actually won't be back until at the time I thought mid-March. So sit tight, a couple more weeks, I'll be back. And then I didn't do that. I told my Instagram followers who follow our Instagram page, but I didn't come on here to do a, a recording. And I'm really sorry about that. And the, and the reason why is I literally was I you all deep in TED Talk land. I mean, I was so engrossed and it was so intense for me I took it extra I took it like the level of seriousness was up there on par with like my fitness competition and like Mm -hmm. you know my fashion shows I've done in the past it was I did not take it lightly when I say fashion shows I mean when I produced them uh, like 10 years ago or so oh god longer than that (laughs) to 15 um wow yeah long 14 I think anyways so so I immediately pivoted once we made the decision and I, the problem with me was I didn't know what on earth I was going to talk about. And I think I just got lucky that, (laughs) so the producers knew I had a podcast. They knew about my story, my own personal story, and they knew about what my podcast was about. So they just kind of gave me free reign and they're like, yeah, just, yeah, that sounds great. Just come on and talk. So, um, and the way I got referred was somebody, they had reproached one of my friends and she wasn't going to be able to do it. And then she referred me instead. And then she ended up, anyway, we ended up doing it together. But um, it took me a good two weeks to even come up with a topic. And do you remember that time frame when oh, yeah. I really, I almost backed out? Yeah. Yeah. No, that was rough. No, you were trying to come up with some brilliant original idea that was so profound. It's going to be earth shaking. No, I mean, no, but I mean, but, but yes, I'm like exaggerating a bit, but not because you took it so seriously that you really, really felt like, okay, where's my original idea? Where's my Ted talk? Where's my thing? And, you know, and, and I, you know, that, I mean, you were really distraught over coming up with an idea. Yeah. I had a really hard time, um, making, it's almost like you develop your your idea, your topic, and then you get to writing. And I am a writer as well, so I st- write like all day long, and then edit, write, edit, write, edit, write, and then and then it wasn't going anywhere. Yeah. Like I wasn't it. I the thought, the quote unquote original thought, wasn't fully developed, so I was having a really hard time with it. And then I so then I switched gears and I did a second topic that complete garbage as well. And I just thought I just, I felt so discouraged. Like I don't think I'm gonna be able to pull this off yeah. on time. I've You're just like wasted two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. I I I've, I wasted two weeks. And so um, so you came home from work one night and I had a full blown meltdown right here, sitting right here. Yeah. And do you remember what happened? Uh. Well, I asked. You know what's going on. And you had explained, um, you know, in, in your sobbing way, <laughs> what was what was happening. No exaggeration when I say meltdown. Yeah, completely. yeah. Um, and and then uh, we just sat there and thought about it for a second, and uh, you know, not trying to fix the problem, so to speak, like I often do. But this time, I actually came up with something that's pretty pretty decent, which was I asked, like, listen, like, why do you have this podcast? Why is this important to you? Uh, you know, what, you know, what is it about this podcast that puts you on the map to begin with that caused you to be, caused them to approach you about doing a TED talk? Mm-hmm. You know, what are the fundamentals? Like, you know, the why? 
And then you had, like, you just stopped right at that point. And you're like, wait a minute. And you know, then then how did you feel at that point? Well, I or is think, that, did I did I capture that right? Or did yeah, I no, that's it right? It, well, it was the obvious answer, and it was right in front of me. But I was trying to be really, uh, um, I was trying to be fancy. I was trying to come up with something like yeah. very new, innovative that nobody had ever heard me talk about. And um, when really just getting back to basics on what it is mm. that I know in my like feel in my soul that I could easily talk about. Um, and I just, when you, when you said whatever you said that night, I stopped crying and I just remember grabbing you, hugging you, gave you a kiss and just thanked you over and over because I just, it, I needed, I needed to be reminded that my original idea for this podcast is good enough to write a TED talk on. Like, mm -hmm. this is the thing. This is the thing. So so the next day I sat down at my laptop and I wrote and it just in one day wrote my entire, well, a day or two, my entire speech and it came out very easily. And, um, and then I spent maybe another day or two editing it and then, um, read it out loud to you and Jasmine, nobody else uh, mm -hmm. wanted them to hear it for the first time at the, at the, um, event and you guys both liked it. And so at that point it was just about memorizing it. Yep. And so I think too, like, you know, and the reason why I'm telling you, well, first of all, I'm telling you guys the story because I told people I would tell, tell them the podcast, but other thing too, is that like memorizing it, um, there, Ted, if you've ever watched a Ted talk, you see it, you can see it's very, very structured or it's supposed to be. It's like, for me, I did TEDx. So it's like under 15 minutes and they told me to send them my script, scripted out, not an outline, send them my script send them a recording of me giving the talk and then they had to approve it. And it was this whole thing. And I get there and I'm the only one that has it under 15 minutes scripted. <laughs> and like everybody else was like shooting from, the, I'm like, they just didn't think I would be any good or like, I don't know if they underestimate, I'm not sure. But everybody else's was like twice as long as mine, which they're, they will be edited down. I found out from one of my podcast guests that's going to be coming on. She's a, she's a TEDx speaker and, she says a lot, you know, a lot of them get edited. So, um, and I just was like, why are they going on like 30, 40 minutes? I, mine's 13 and a half minutes, like yep. a very, um, pretty much down to the, to the minute and down to the second. And so, um, yeah, it was concise. It yeah. Was good. It was to the point, not yeah. rambling. And some of the other ones were, no, don't say anything. They, they were, were wonderful. Well, the thing, I think the thing is, is that I'm new to this. Yeah. I'm new to all of this. So all everything I'm doing is very new and I have to put in a lot of work in order to sort of write it into my um, consciousness. Yeah. And they are used to giving their... Yeah, yeah. and don't get me know. wrong. I actually really did enjoy like almost all of them. I, a lot. Just it, they wouldn't... Lo a lot of them went long yeah, is what you're saying. And, yeah. uh, but, but like take Boomer, for example, the last guy. He was amazing. He, he was awesome. I loved it. I could have listened to that guy talk like all day long. I mean, he's so energetic and you know, such an interesting topic and the whole thing was inspirational and funny and the whole, you know, and he'll whole, be on, he's, the, I'm yeah. recording with him this weekend. Next yeah. Weekend. He's the whole package. You know, it was a, it was great. It was a good time, but I know what you mean because you know, you memorize exactly what it was, what you wanted to talk about. And then everybody else just ad libbed <laughs> where, you know, they gave it's you so these crazy. rules and like, you're the only one that followed it. I was so afraid of breaking the rules too. I'm like, you don't understand. I have to have it exactly verbatim. And I get there and I'm like, nobody's, nobody's <laughs> verbatim. They're just shooting from the hip, but they are speakers. A lot of them, yeah. have, they've been doing this. And so, and a lot of them applied to be on and they went through all the the channels and i just think i just got lucky yeah so but you spent a lot of time memorizing it i mean you did. you i mean you even looked went so far as to look up techniques as to how to memorize like long speeches and things like that yeah yes i had to i mean there was some stuff that suggested uh online to movement with listening to whatever you need to memorize um so we'd go for walks and i would listen to it in my airpods i'd listen to it 24 7 on a loop in my car yeah. i broke it out into different so i listened to myself giving it and then i broke it out into different sections like you know four different sections of my speech and i'd master one section at a time and then i'd practice it and so anyway i really put a lot of effort into it yeah. all this to say that's why I took the the additional time off. Um, there's no way I could have gotten us up onto YouTube, which I still managed to do, even amidst TED Talk, and record new episodes, and book guests, and edit, and there's just absolutely no way. So that's why. And then um, right after the TED Talk, Mark and I got COVID. Yeah. <laughs> so 
That was fun. Good I times. was going to come back that next week. We were going to record this episode and then we both got sick. So that my, is my why, fault. That is why we are back on April. Was it sixth today? Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's taken us um, this long. So we are, we are here and excited and just wanted to bring you guys up to speed on, on what's taken so long, but I am actually really happy because I think I needed every bit of that time in order to come up with what we what we were able to come up with. Um, okay, so I think you know. Long story short, in terms of the style of the podcast, you know, I started to feel like we lost the plot and we were going in a direction that wasn't congruent with what we're what this podcast is here for. And we are really, I feel like, back on track because I am booked and busy right now. I spent last weekend like a day or two uh, reaching out to people. On, uh, I wrote a list of topics that I was interested in that I could, that were not, um, would not feel predatory for me to reach out to people to ask them if they wanted to be on. And I'm going to read you some of those topics in a second. But, um, and I reached out and I just made the, all the text messages, um, emails, DMs, whatever. And every person got back to me and every person said yes. So, and I'm booked through May now. So I am so pumped. Um, I'm, I do have a list of topics still that I'm trying, that I would love to book people for. Uh, we'll give you an example, uh, of one of the topics I was trying to think, uh, you know, just to give you an idea of like what I mean when I say I, I can reach out to these people. This is not predatory, but yet it still fulfills. Wait, hold on, time out. What do you mean by predatory? Can you explain that a little bit? I, I, I don't want to exploit somebody's pain who doesn't want to. And um, maybe somebody would prematurely agree to do something. For example, uh, I'm, um, this is kind of a rough example, but I had somebody in season one. We went through. I re- I Let's see. I reached out to her, I think. I think this is, yeah, I think this is kind of how I learned. This is very early on. Um, she had commented on one of my posts about launching the podcast. She said she was kind of doing something similar or working on something similar. I knew a little bit about her. Oh, because she said, oh, yeah, I, I match a lot of your criteria that you have on your website. And I said, well, I'd love to have you on as a guest. And she did. She liked it. She didn't really reply. So I just asked her, hey, I messaged her, texted her, do you want to come on? I know her as an acquaintance, not, she's not, I'm not close with her. I know her through a mutual friend and she agreed to meet for a pre-interview. I could tell she's a little trepidatious, but she was also, she's somebody who is in like a, a position of leadership and she's very out there in terms of, um, people know her. And we were talking about the topic of, I think it was parental alienation mm-hmm. and among other topics as well. And she was like the victim of parental, like her, um, her kids alienating from her. Mm-hmm. And she, we, we, we recorded, we did the, we did the pre-interview. I wrote up, they spent the day doing my outline as I always do. I sent it over, got it approved, made any changes she wanted me to make. We paid for the studio time and she asked to have it sent to her to listen to, which I will always do if somebody asks. And she decided last minute, I scheduled the episode uh, for when she wanted me to schedule it out a little further, I did. And then she said, please don't air it. And of course I would never. And I told her that too. I said, if you don't, cause she, I could tell she was having quote unquote, like buyers or more, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Like I said, if you don't want me to air this, I, I don't, I want you to be excited about this. I don't want you to feel bad or ashamed or embarrassed or anything. I don't, I want you to be excited. And so at that moment, it just reinforced any feeling I had. Like it feels weird to be saying, Hey, I know the father of your kids doesn't let them see you want to come on my podcast. Like that just feels so yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and there is an exploitive angle to it that you don't intend to do it that way, but you know, you're looking for content. And so sometimes that might come across the wrong way. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So there are many, many, many topics that are that still achieve what I want to achieve and that are not don't fall under that category. I still will cover those categories, but there I will strictly like leave it in their hands to come to me. That's what I mean when I say um, predatory. So uh, I I contact a lot of people. They all said yes. One of the um, sub or a topics that I have booked for was one of my last ones. I think I've booked it's in late, like, 
It's in May, mid-May, I think, um, is on, I wanted to give an example to you guys just so you kind of know what I'm talking about. It's on the topic of image and perfectionism. And it is with somebody who I met through a mutual friend who is the image of perfectionism. <laughs> and um, you could look at her and say, wow, she's stunning, like, and be captivated by her. Or look at her and be like, who does she think she is? It could go one of two ways. So it's kind of those topics of like, and she, cause she places a lot of value on how you present yourself in the world. Now, a lot of people would say like, how you look doesn't matter, whatever, what, you know, like. I wonder how she judges others. I don't know. We'll find out. Okay. We'll find out. I don't know. That's, you know, so, so that, but do you see the difference between the topics? Yeah. Big difference, right? So that is one example. And there's. I booked, like I said, I booked all of April and May. So, um, you guys will, I don't want to spoil any of the other ones, but the list that I want to share with you guys today, if you know someone or if you yourself want to be a guest, I'm going to look at the camera, my YouTube camera and, um, tell you guys, because hopefully I'll be able to make this into a a, a reel or a YouTube short, um, into position. Okay. Okay, This is the list. (laughs) This is the list of topics that I have not booked guests for. All right. Drum roll, please. We do have somebody that can, my, our little producer person will put that in there for me. Okay. First one is semaglutide medication. So weight loss medication, Ozempic, Wagovi, Manjaro. If you have taken it or if, or if you, um, and, and liked it or hated it, People feel different ways about this medication. They feel like people are taking the easy way out. Some people think it's a lifesaver, whatever. I'd love to talk to somebody who has taken some agglutide medication. It's the class of medication. Mm-hmm. Um, breast implant illness. I have that on here because somebody actually reached out to me about it, wanting to come on. She um, suffers from breast implant illness, and um, she has not scheduled with me. She wasn't ready, but it was a great idea. Is this the person I know? No, where I delivered the wheelchair? No, no, no. I, no, I lost contact with her years ago. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't even know what happened to her. Uh, but no, this one, somebody was uh, reached out to me, but she wasn't ready to schedule. But it was a great idea, and I thought, well, let me put that on my list, so I'm going to put it out there uh, to anybody who might have it and wants to, want to spread awareness. Um, some people don't think it exists. Uh, some people think that it's all in the head and psychosomatic or, or they think that they're blaming it on the implants and it's not the implants. Mm. Yeah. Um, sober lifestyle. Think if you are a real housewives of Beverly Hills watcher, think Kyle Richard. So you've decided on a, on a sober lifestyle, not because for addiction purposes or anything, it's just of the lifestyle you prefer for health purposes and you feel better, you look better, whatever. A lot of people don't feel, um, I don't know. A lot of people get a lot. Uh, there's a lack of support for people in their friendship circles when somebody stops drinking. You know, they get they don't they don't get invited to stuff. Um, yeah, and not out of because they're an alcoholic. It's just this they just choice just of give it like up. you know I'm just going to give it up. And I know I feel better, I look better, and that's just the lifestyle I'm choosing. Not because I have an addiction or something like that. Yeah. One of our former guests, I want to say Maya. Um, Mm -hmm. she, she's one, you know, um, and and I have a few different friends. I mean, it's, it's gaining more and more, I think, awareness that this is a lifestyle that is, um, suits a lot of people, um, who are formerly, they're very, and the reason why this one particularly, why I say why, why this is interests me is because the people, these people are very social people and the, and they, so they drink socially. And they give it up and they're still trying to have their social life, but they've given up the alcohol and it's like this weird place that people don't know what to do, like their friend, whatever. So that's a, that's a topic. Um, okay. Adult ADHD and neurodivergence. Um, this one also came to me by somebody who was interested in coming on the podcast, but we have not scheduled either, um, adult ADHD and it, but it did give me a great idea. So wanted to put that one out there. This is more because I think ADHD, ADHD in general is, and neurodivergence, like so being on the spectrum, I think ADHD specifically is misunderstood in the way that um, sometimes somebody could think they're hard to be around, they're flaky, they're whatever, there's lots of different, they're not good listeners. I have known my fair share of adults with ADHD and 
it can be it can be difficult and so um it's a chance to have that conversation um influencer lifestyle um you know if you're a instagram influencer tiktok influencer something like that i'm sure they experience their fair amount of judgment um sports mom cheer mom dance mom think you know abby lee miller from dance moms somebody who is putting your kid through a grueling sports cheer dance class schedule and you get a lot of hate out there that's a different breed there's just so they're so different i mean just the mentality you know how they how hard they drive their kids and all of that there's definitely a lot of judgment in that that arena it's a lot of i think yeah i mean some some i don't i don't even know how i feel about it so i mean obviously like i don't really feel that strongly about it but we'll we'll explore it right yeah, yeah yeah i mean that's yeah but it is an interesting one because I, I even us as cheer parents, I would see people mm-hmm. not not accuse us of that because we're like the least that, but accuse others that we were around. Um, okay, so alpha females, uh, my alpha females out there, my friends who are alpha females, they know they've get la- they've gotten labeled, um, not very nice names, but being misunderstood for being you know out there hustling alpha, having to really assert yourself out in the world. Um, I'd love to, and I have plenty of those to choose from in my life um i'm sure they get judged mischaracterized all the things uh infidelity the choice to stay in particular i would love to talk to somebody i mean i would also like to talk to somebody who's um, committed adultery but and maybe they were left they were left it it, but particularly the choice to stay in somebody who is it maybe made their relationship better because i know that exists and i think uh, for me that's just I, I, I'm just curious. I'm just nosy and curious, and I would love to be able to talk. And you said you might know somebody. So. I do, yeah. So that. And then eating disorders, obesity. So obesity, recently I saw that Oprah did a special about obesity um, when she came out and said that she was actually taking some of glutide medication. So I don't know if it's Ozempic or, or what it is. But um, they were. she had some doctors on, and they were talking about how, how just like they did with alcoholism, how they made it a, a disease. Yeah. They've done the same thing similar to to that they've done that with obesity so i would like to talk to somebody who battles obesity also just eating disorders in general whether it's anorexia bulimia binge um eating disorder all of those and then the last one i have on here is allopathic versus naturopathic medicine uh obviously there's two different schools of thought on that as well i incorporate both in my life so and that's all I have, there was one other one I was going to add, but then I already forgot what it was. So there I'm, I'm adding more and more every day. Um, so if, if, if that's you, if any of those are you, please uh, let me know. I do have my email and my website in the uh, description box, so you can reach me there. That is all I have. Is there anything that I missed that you can think of? I don't know. I think you got it all in those uh, six other att- five other yeah. attempts. I think uh, we summarized it pretty well. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thanks for joining me today, honey. And um, we will hopefully and have every intention on seeing you guys back here next week. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this conversation, please give it a like and leave me a comment. I want to know what you guys think. Also, if you're looking for more information about how to be a guest on the show, please go to our website at humanityunlockedpodcast.com. We only record shows in person and we are located in Sacramento, California. Oh, and if you're not subscribed, make sure you tap that button so you can get updated on weekly episodes as they go live. Is that it? I think that's it. See you guys next time.